So I've decided to have another go at modelling the tennis ball. Uh, I'm not going to try and race through it this time to get it under five minutes, uh, as I did in the video that uh, sort of essentially copied largely Peter's technique. What I want to do is try and make the band a bit broader and uneven, and also, as you can see in this image perhaps, uh, get these ends to pinch in slightly so this uh, the, the two bits that the tennis ball is made out of, of got this sort of lobe shape at the end there. So I don't really know how to adequately describe that but we'll just have a go at making that shape. So right click and create a cube and then select these edges. Um, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, essentially the edges I did in the last video. It's going to start in a similar fashion and, and in the same fashion to Peter's video. So with those selected right click and set the hardness to hard. Now, to get the pinching in effect, select the ones that haven't been selected, in this case, and right-click Scale Uniform, and holding the Shift key down, scale them in 50%, so that value in the top left-hand corner, and that's hopefully going to give me the appropriate uh, pinching and lobe effect. So select the entire item and smooth it once, then go Space to deselect everything, select and we'll select by hard edges to get that hard edge. Right click, bevel with the shift key held down, take it down to a 0.1, select the entire thing and press smooth once and twice. So it's not round yet, but we can use the vertex mode and deform, inflate, hit the tab key, enter 100% to make it a sphere. Now in this case, you need to pick out the central line of the loop, which uh, originally made up the uh, edges of the cube so that's that one and then I can switch to face mode and it'll have selected the area that I want to uh, inset, oops I don't want that unset, uh, extrude in so extrude normal and just take it in a small amount. The next step then is to select the entire object and smooth it once more with the S key and then I'm going to select one of these lines here and the one either side of it and press L for loop and then hit delete and right click and oh and I keep forgetting select the entire object right click and then clean up and that'll get rid of any uh, little vertexes that were left in those lines now I can select one of these lines and press G to extend the selection right round that surface select the face mode right click and extract and normal so I'll just extract that in a strip. Press space to deselect, select these uh, edges again, press G and now in face mode I'm going to right click and if I just do left click on inset it looks like this but I got a handy tip Oops, and if I can go back to where I was before Control Alt Z if I right click and then right click on inset that allows me to bring in a couple of lines along that edge so thank you to the uh, the poster on my YouTube channel who uh, gave me that tip in fact I'll just just pause this and find the uh, comment okay so it was on this uh, making space invader shape video and down at the bottom here whoops shh, 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 don't talk over myself right it was uh, my Kios Vieira who uh, who gave me the tips about uh, using the the, the right mouse button and the middle mouse button to get additional options in Wings 3D and uh, it seems that th there are quite a few things with additional options and if you look at the menu when it's got these uh, dots either side of the command it looks like those are the ones with additional options so watch out for that it's very handy okay so I did that beveling and I didn't intend to do it at that point so I'm going to go back a stage select these vertexes right click deform and crumple them at random very slightly Okay, now I'll select these edges. So I'll press G, go to the inset tool, right click, and right click on inset, and that'll give me some lines in there. Right, you can see there's some collision between the geometry, so I'll select the entire shape there and scale uniform just to bring it out slightly off the surface, but that's okay. I'm going to hide my original shape, and you can see I've got some odd geometry occurring in here, so what I can do is select the inside and the outside of that and just intrude it and that'll turn it into a strip I don't need the inside of this strip so I can make that into a hole so I've just got the edges there 
you can see the edge there so I can put my geometry back in place and then hopefully there will be no bits peeking through and if I switch to my uh, hit tab to see what it looks like in the subdivide mode it'll look okay okay right there's a bit coming through there isn't there Let's hit tab again I need to bring that out so I just select this entire thing and scale uniform a tiny bit again so I'm trying to get the effect if you cast your mind back of this strip so it's not that buried that far in the surface so I wanted it to be quite subtle so there we go right having done that then I'll just uh, name the materials actually I don't need to because I've got two separate objects so if I export that uh, depending on the software it goes into it'll recognize it as two separate objects I'll do the materials anyway so uh, select that one and uh, go into face mode right click right click on material I'll call that one a gray and make it um, a gray okay that's, that's logical and then select the cube in face mode right click on material and call this one green and then make that one a bit green ish there we go and that is my new tennis ball model hopefully a slightly better tennis ball model and we'll see i'll let you be the judge of that cheers now